have you been struggling to figure out and make sense of all of the conversations around immunity, vaccines, artificial, natural, passive? And has it been difficult for you to really get a sense that you understand and are making the best decision for you? I mean, really what we want to do at the end of the day is take all of this chaos and put it aside and just make sure we're getting the information that helps us know that we're making the best decision for us and our family to make sure we're as protected as we can be. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tammy with Nurse Minder and in today's episode, we are going to break down what immunity is and give you some terminology that will help clear out all the cobwebs and the confusion and really help you make sense of what we're talking about when it comes to immunity. The three things we're going to cover in this video is what is immunity, how do we acquire it, why do we need it, and some of the pros and cons around the different ways in which we can achieve immunity to diseases, viruses, biological agents. So let's start with defining what immunity is. Essentially immunity for our bodies is a relative state of defense against an invading organism. This might be a bacteria, a virus, a parasite, a fungus, and it's not something we are born with. Now that's, an, that's a critical thing to remember is we are actually not born with this. We need to experience the world in order to be exposed to these these um, foreign bodies to develop immunity towards them. Okay. Now there's two types, two ways in which we can get this immunity. The first is called active and the second is called passive. Let's talk about active immunity first. Now, when it comes to active immunity, we're going to subdivide this into two categories, but overall the definition is active immunity is when your body is exposed to a foreign object. It recognizes it as foreign. It doesn't like it and it produces what we call antibodies, those little soldiers in your, inside your body who go to battle on your behalf. You don't even know what's happening half the time. Uh, so you may not have signs or symptoms that you've had this invasion because your soldiers, your antibodies, have already gone and dealt with the threat. They've neutralized it, they've, they've killed it off, and it's gone. So the way that happens though is in our very first exposure to a bacteria, a virus, a fungi, or a parasite, is our body recognizes it and it gets to work to building the army. It tells them exactly when you see this particular, it's called a protein, um, when you see this show up inside the body, we want you to get rid of it. It has to be very specific. They only um, are designed so like measles, antibodies for measles will not attack a mumps protein. It has to be a mumps antibody to recognize it. So they have very specific jobs inside the body. And so once our body's first exposed to them, we create them, it takes a little while, we train them, and then they go to work to take care of the offending agent. And then they're always on standby. So that would be the active way of receiving immunity. Now we can artificially create active immunity by giving a vaccine. And so we may not come across this in our natural environment. And so when we get a vaccine for tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, COVID, influenza, our body is being artificially introduced to weakened or dead viruses or strains so that our body can learn, so that our soldiers can then train to recognize the foreign object and then deal with it, contain it, and make sure it doesn't cause us harm. That's known as vaccine-induced immunity or artificial immunity, but they are designed to stimulate active immunity so that our body is already prepared. Okay. And the reason we would want that is because some of these diseases have wiped out as we are seeing right now, wiping out generations of people because we haven't had that exposure. So that's what happens when a new virus comes on the scene or a new bacteria comes on scene is nobody has immunity and it will have a significant impact while we start to develop active immunity through exposure and artificial immunity through vaccinations in order to build up the collective protection. Now, passive immunity is another way in which we can develop immunity, and this is most commonly associated with, most people can recognize this with breast milk. We know that when babies breastfeed, moms pass through the breast milk, their antibodies to the baby to give them some protection. We can also get this through what's called immunoglobulins. We can have this as an injection or as a, an intravenous infusion where we, like a blood transfusion as well, where we are being provided with somebody else's. So we are borrowing immunity. And when we borrow immunity, it doesn't actually 
last as long. So here's one of the, the cons for passive immunity is that it only lasts as long as those antibodies circulate in the body because it is not our body that is creating the response and training the soldiers and then having them hang out on standby. We have borrowed the immunity. So once that immunity is gone and those cells are, are done circulating, so too is our protection. Now the advantage of active immunity by having direct exposure or having a vaccine introduced into our body to create that artificial exposure is that we tend to have much longer protection. Now we used to think that active immunity was lifelong, but what we noticed through the research, and this is not new research, think of tetanus. We have to have a tetanus booster every 10 years. Um, they used to think smallpox was eradicated, and what they th what they are realizing now is that because there has been no um, need for those soldiers, so you got the injection, you created soldiers to go and deal with those foreign objects, is that without them ever being called into action, is that they've kind of just, they've lost their, their impact. And so we have to have booster shots. But the pro of an active immunity, whether that's vaccine or being exposed to a foreign object, is that we have longer lasting immunity, plus our body is responsible for generating and making the antibodies. So we continually produce them as needed. The pro with passive immunity is that it's immediate. So active immunity takes a little bit longer, right? Because our body has to create it. And if we're getting a vaccine, we know it takes up to two weeks for our full effect of immunity. So it does take a bit of time to launch that response. The pro with passive immunity is that it's immediate. The con is that it's short lasting. Our body's actually not responsible for creating the antibodies, we are borrowing them from somebody else. So once they're used up, they're gone, our protection is gone. And so the goal is to create an immune response without causing suffering in your body. So you may notice that you have some signs and symptoms of an illness as your body is working towards building up those antibodies. The thing is you would not get as sick as if you didn't have them. So without them, your body is completely vulnerable and you would be waiting then for that active immunity for your body to recognize the protein, to develop the antibodies, to train the soldiers, to attack the, the foreign body. You would be waiting for that process to happen and meantime you get sick, 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 sick. And then it may be too, too much for those soldiers to overcome. And so sometimes some people will succumb to their exposure to active viruses because they have to wait for the two weeks for the full reaction, okay? Whereas a vaccine given in anticipation of a potential threat gives your body that time to build up the response, to train and recognize and, and know what they need to do should an attack actually come to your body. You are giving your body that headway. You're giving them that time to develop the response so that when the actual invading me mechanism comes into the body and is exposed, you can launch a much faster response because our body has memory. So that is the advantage to having a vaccine-induced immunity is that you are already prepared ahead of time. Now the best resource to know which vaccines you need for where you live is the Center for Disease Control. And I'll put their link in the description below. They always update this. It is a reputable, resource to refer to when you want to know is my area where I live is tetanus an issue, diphtheria, measles, mumps, smallpox, yellow fever. Because it's not common that yellow fever is here in Canada and the States so we do not require vaccination for it unless we're traveling to an area where it is an issue. And so you want to make sure you're up to date with what is required for you to make the best decision for safety for you and your family when it comes to determining active, passive immunity and vaccine-induced immunity.